Well, good morning, and welcome to Unity Church for Creative Living. This is Reverend Yvonne McAndrew at Unity Church for Creative Living in St. John's, Florida. I am so grateful to have you tuning in and joining me. I love the little likes and the hearts and the comments that you you post, um, and I really do read them all and try to comment back uh, to all of them because it helps me feel connected to you, and I miss you so much, and I love you, and I am holding in prayer when that soon we'll be able to come back in. Uh, we'll be able to come back in person. We're having a board meeting today, so that is on the uh, agenda. So as soon as we know, we'll let you know, but we also want to make sure everyone stays safe. All right, well, it is Father's Day, so happy Father's Day to all you dads out there. Give yourselves a hand. I hope you're grilling outside or doing something that you totally love today, because you deserve it. Happy Father's Day. So let's take a moment Let's take a moment and center in prayer. Take a gentle breath in. Slowly release it. And just allow your breath to help you center. As we say thank you. Thank you, sweet, sweet spirit, for this day for this opportunity to be alive in it. Thank you for all of the good that we have, all the love that we have in our life. Thank you, God, for fathers and the love that they give to their children. Centered in the space of divine love, let us open our hearts and be consciously and intentionally open and receptive to the living spirit of truth that moves in and through us from that divine presence of God of which we are part of. Thank you, God, for all of our good. Thank you, God, for keeping us healthy and safe and well. Thank you, God, for online opportunities like Facebook Live and Zoom and many others that help support us staying connected during these challenging times. Centered in love, peace, and understanding. That is my intention for the day as I move forward in God's grace. And so it is. Amen and amen. Today's daily word for Sunday, June 21st, 2020. Father's blessing. I give thanks for all expressions of fatherly love. My relationship with my father may have been positive and nurturing, or difficult and challenging. He may have been a strong presence during my childhood, or he may have been absent. We may be part of each other's lives today, we may be estranged, or he may have passed from earthly life. Whatever our circumstances, I bless my father, and I see him enfolded in divine love. As I honor my father, I also honor all the father figures who have helped guide me along my path. Family members, teachers, neighbors, clergy, employers, and friends. I bless them as I recall all the ways each one, in a unique way, has modeled strength, guidance, wisdom, and patience. Their presence remains with me thanks to the gifts of fatherly love. And from Proverbs 4.11, I have taught you the way of wisdom. I have led you in the paths of uprightness. I like that, uprightness. Instead of righteousness, uprightness. Very nice. Father's blessings. I give thanks for all expressions of fatherly love.
Thank you, God. So I want to tell you about, um, in honor of Father's Day, there, there were four fathers to be sitting in a maternity ward waiting room as their wives were giving birth. And a nurse walks up to the first guy and says, congratulations, you're the father of twins. And he says, twins? Well, that's odd. I work for the Minnesota Twins. A nurse comes in a few minutes later and says to the second guy, congratulations, you are the father of triplets. Triplets? Well, that's really strange because I work for the 3M company. <laughs> a few minutes later, another nurse arrives and tells the third guy, Con congratulations, you're the father of quadruplets. What? I work for the Four Seasons Hotel. That's interesting. The last guy sitting there starts shaking his head and he's like, no, 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 no. And the other guy's like, what's wrong? And he's like, I work for 7-Up. <laughs> I love that little story. I love pulling it out on Father's Day because it's just kind of cute. God is good all the time. Uh, if you're just visiting with us today, welcome. I like to say God is good, and I like to hear you say all the time. Thank you. God is good all the time. <laughs> you got it. You know, I've heard it said that if you only have four hours to chop down a tree, spend three hours sharpening your axe. In other words, with a dull axe, you'll spend a lot of time and energy trying to chop down the tree. But with a very pre precision sharp tool, you can complete the task at hand with less time and less effort. And I agree with that concept. I liken it to our own spiritual growth. Have we sharpened our spiritual tools so that when we use them, they are the utmost effective? In other words, have we sharpened our acts? Our spiritual tools of prayer and meditation, denials and affirmations, breath work, ho'oponopono, forgiveness, spiritual learning, etc., etc. It's our job to keep our spiritual tools sharp and use them regularly. Unity is founded on prayer. Prayer is a profound spiritual tooth that tooth, truth, <laughs> a profound spiritual truth and tool that when we use it often and sharpen it to its maximum effectiveness can bring about the most rewarding results. If you read the stories about Jesus in the gospel, you see that Jesus regularly sharpened his tool of prayer. Prayer kept Jesus aligned with the divine presence of God within him. Jesus said, it's not I, but the Father within that does the work. Jesus kept his acts sharpened, his spiritual tools. In the wise words of Mother Teresa, the fruit of silence is prayer. The fruit of prayer is faith. The fruit of, fruit of faith is love. The fruit of love is service. And the fruit of service is peace. And I'm going to add one more. The fruit of peace is understanding. Understanding that we are more than this physical body. Understanding that we are one. We are co-creators with God. We are made in the image and likeness of God. And God is good all the time. In the Bible in Genesis it reads, And God made man in his image. Male and female he made them. I find this very intriguing. 
It says God made man in his image and likeness, male and female, he made them. This opens my awareness to recognize that they're speaking of the masculine and feminine energies of which we have both, regardless of gender. So if we know that we are one with God, we are made in the image and likeness of God, with the masculine and feminine energies of God, and that we co-create with God, and we're in this body suit where we can experience growth and evolution and transformation, then what are we waiting for? What are we waiting for? How do we move forward, evolve, transform? We shift in consciousness. We do things that bring our awareness to a place where we can examine where we are headed and determine if we are in alignment with our soul's journey. I spoke last week a little bit about Gary Zukoff's analogy of the soul being the mothership of a fleet of ships, and we are one of the little boats in the fleet. And our job is to follow the direction of the mothership, the soul. It knows where it's going, and it's our lead. However, sometimes we think we know better. Or perhaps we just forget who we are and we wander off. Our wandering away from where the mothership, the soul, is heading is a sure way to encounter difficult storms and turbulence. And even if we wander off, the challenges we face have a gift embedded for our growth and remembrance of who we are. Take the prodigal son parable, for example. Most of you are familiar with it. It's in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 15. A father has two sons, and the younger son decides to one day ask his father for his share of the inheritance so that he can go off and explore the world. And the father obliges, and the young son leaves for a far-off land. He finds many friends and, and enjoys riotous living, they call it, until his money runs out, then the friends, friends are gone, and the money is gone, and the fun is gone, and he's found hungry and alone. He gets the only job he can find, feeding the pigs. He is so hungry, he wishes he could eat the slop that he's feeding the pigs. Now, for a Jewish man, this is a very low point. Very low. But know that low points in our life are fertile with lessons and growth, soul growth. In the Bible it says, suddenly he came to himself and he realized that those who work for his father are treated better than this. It says, I will rise and go to my father and ask forgiveness and ask to be asked to be a hired hand. So he returns home, and from a distance his father sees him, and he runs to him and welcomes him home and embraces him. The son asks for forgiveness, and the father doesn't even hear it. The father never judged him. The father tells the hired hand to go and get the finest robe, the family ring, put the sandals on his feet, and kill the fatted calf, for today we celebrate. My son was dead, and now he's alive. He was lost, and now he's found. Remember the older son? He was returning from a hard day's work in the fields. And he ha he heard music and smelled the smell of meat roasting. And he asked one of the workers as he was coming in what was going on. And, and the worker said, well, your brother has returned and your father has killed the fatted calf in celebration of his return. And the other brother wasn't happy about that. He was angry. He refused to go in. The father came out 
and spoke to the older son and said, Please, come and celebrate. Your, your brother has returned. But the older son said, No, no. All these years I have worked so hard for you, and you never threw me a party. But this pitiful son of yours comes back who has squandered all that you gave him, and you kill the fatted calf and throw a party? Seriously? Then the father said to him, My son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. We had to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and is now found. It's a beautiful Father's Day story and so deep with meaning and truth. The father represents God in the story and the sons represent our relationship with God. Neither son realizes the richness of living in the presence of God. One son travels to a far-off land and ends up in great want and need, and through it he remembers who he is, and he returns home. The older son is living in the presence of God, but doesn't realize it until the younger son returns. It's a beautiful and powerful story with many, many layers to it. It shows us that the Father's love is unconditional and wants us to fully recognize our relationship with him and live in the fullness of God's peace and love and understanding. It's just interesting, though, how easily we forget who we are as beloveds of the divine. So how do we how do we go about remembering our divine perfection? Good question, huh? How do we remember our divine perfection? Well, it just so happens I'm going to be teaching a 10-week course. It's going to be online, online on Zoom, and it's titled Remembering Our Divine Perfection. It's going to be on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. starting July 15th. And in this class, we're going to dive deep and focus on acknowledging the underlying issues that desire healing. And this course is for anyone that desires to shed the weight of the ego, the voice of self-doubt, self-sabotage, loneliness, critical self-talk, and any self-defeating behavior. Once we uncover the underlying cause of the pain, the health challenge, the weight gain, the heartache, etc., we have the ability to heal it. And in healing it, we become more fully aware of who we are and we remember our divine wholeness and perfection. Marianne Williamson says this, this is a sacred journey where you will learn to shift your relationship with yourself and your body from one of fear to one of love. And you will begin to integrate the various parts of yourself, mind, body, and spirit to become one again in all ways, the beautiful and peaceful person you were created to be. We will be using her book titled A Course in Weight Loss. Again, this is an online course that begins Wednesday, July 15th, 7 p.m. Registration will be online this Wednesday at unityinjack.com. There is an early bird price if you like to save money, register early. In closing, I want to tie this all together with a quote from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 11. In honor of Father's Day, this is a scripture where Jesus thanks his Father. It reads, Thank you, Father. 
thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Meaning, the truth is most easily revealed to the humble person whose mind and heart is open and receptive to God's good. Such are often referred to as babes or infants by the worldly wise. In verse 28 it says, Come to me, all that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. So a yoke back in those days was a, um, it was a hand carved wooden device designed to equalize the weight between two oxen so that their combined strength might be balanced and equal for the job at hand. The, never had two exactly same size oxen, so one would always be a little bigger and a little stronger than the other, and the yoke was handcrafted and put over their their necks and attached to the plow to keep the the share of the workload balanced and make it easier. So in this passage it says, you know, man puts on the yoke of Christ when he learns to join his conscious mind with Christ consciousness. When he works in this consciousness, he finds himself filled with tireless energy and abundant physical strength, an excess amount of acuum and verve. He is filled with zest for his task, and at the end of the day, he feels as rested as he felt at the beginning. I'm ready for that. To all those who are overworked, weary, or discouraged, Jesus offers help. He assured us that those who sincerely follow the Christ way of living will find his yoke easy. As we work in partnership with God, availing ourselves of the Christ love, wisdom, understanding, and power, our burdens will grow lighter, our work easier, our lives happier and peaceful. God is good all the time. Keep your acts sharp, your consciousness in Christ. Keep your heart and mind open to knowing that you already live in the presence of God and you are a beloved of the divine. And remember to join me on July 15th for the Zoom class, Remembering Our Divine Perfection. Namaste. I'm going to invite you to join me in a brief meditation. So I invite you to let go of anything you may be holding in your heart and mind. And give this time to God. Gently breathe in, God is... Slowly breathe out, I am, God is, I am, I invite you to allow my words to be the words of your own heart and mind as we share this brief time of prayer and meditation. Thank you, God. Thank you, sweet, sweet spirit, for your living, loving presence that is always present. Dear Heavenly Father, I set my intention today to be awake to your presence, to be open and receptive to following your divine wisdom and your divine guidance. Lead me the way that I should go. 
I take your yoke upon me and I'm able to rest and yet do the work that is mine to do with ease and with grace. Thank you, God, for reminding me of the spiritual tools that I need to keep sharpened. And I need to keep adding those adding tools to my tool belt. Because all of these tools help me remember the truth of who I am. Help me stay in alignment with the direction that my soul is traveling knowing that it is traveling in the direction of my highest and best good. And so centered in this place of love and peace and understanding, I surrender. I surrender to you, God, and your, all the good that you have for me. I release I let go and I follow your direction, your guidance. So I invite you to take another gentle breath in, slowly release it. As we breathe deeper within and connect in that sacred place within us, where we connect with the divine presence of God. And I invite you to rest there for a few moments in the silence. In the silence. God is my help in every need. God does my every hunger feed. God walks beside me, guides my way through every moment of the day. I now am wise, I now am true, patient, kind, and loving too. God is my strength. I can't be sick. God is my all unfailing quick. I need not fear. I need not worry. I need only to remember the truth of who I am and align with the divine presence within me. So centered in this truth and this awareness I go forth in love, in peace, and in understanding that God is guiding my way. And as I stay in alignment with that truth, in alignment with the direction my soul is traveling, my yoke and burden is easy and light. And may I also remember if I end up in storms or troubling water, may that be a reminder for me that I have wandered and to course correct and come back into alignment with the direction of my soul. Thank you, sweet, sweet spirit. 
in the name and through the power of the living Christ presence. We say thank you, God. And so it is. Amen and amen. We're going to receive our love offering, and I am so, so grateful to all of you that have been so generous to be able to give whatever you can give to help support this ministry as we still, as we move forward doing the highest and best for all. So thank you for your giving. I invite you to take the gift that you have to give, fill it with the love that you have in your heart. And let's, we're going to affirm our offertory blessing. I will say it once, and then I'll invite you to say it along with me. Divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And I am richly blessed. Thank you, God. Together, divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And I am richly blessed. Thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. Well, happy Father's Day to all you dads out there. Enjoy this beautiful day. And happy Father's Day to all the fathers yet to be. I think we're going to be having a baby boom in about eight months or so. We'll see. And uh, God is good all the time. This is Reverend Yvonne McAndrew at Unity Church for Creative Living in St. John's, Florida, reminding you that today is a great day for a great day. Namaste.